What's up everybody, it's your boy Beam here. Sorry about the background noise, that's my parents talking in the background. For breakfast, I uh, didn't really have anything. For brunch, my parents and I went to um, a record store slash restaurant and it was very tasty. I had a really good club sandwich with some fries and it was very tasty. I also had some coffee. Um, and after that, we went to Starbucks to have coffee as well. <laughs> um, and then, you know, we got home and um, my mom and I put our coffee into the fridge um, and we went on a walk. I ended up forgetting about my coffee. Um, so I just, just now I uh, took all the ice out of the coffee so then I can have it tomorrow. Um, but yeah. Um, what else? Um, yeah, so my mom went on a walk. I forgot about the coffee. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I'm not doing too much now. Aw, oh, man. Okay, here's here's something cool. Um, I wanted to show you guys this as it was happening, but it's fine. I could just sort of tell you guys generally about it. So I just recently got um, Redshift working on my computer. I haven't super been in a really... Um, I haven't been super in a rush to get it working because I don't really care about blue light filtering all that much, but you know, it's a nice to have. And um, So um, I found this polybar module online um, called, um, it's just like a Redshift module. And you know, here's the, the programming for it. Um, I don't know, it's a, fine, it's a fine script, it's cool, but it gets its um, variables from this other thing called env.sh. Um, and Redshift temp used to just be, uh, Redshift temp used to just be 4200 here, which is what my target temperature is for Redshift. Um, but I changed it to Redshift P and then that pipes into sed. Um, and that sets out the exact color temperature because when you do, um, Redshift P, it gives you this whole long output, um, and it sets it to. It gives you this whole long output, um, but if you sort of spam Redshift P, right, you can see color temperature here slowly going further and further down as it gets darker outside, right? So, the thing I did was I had it set out the color temperature here. Um, so then, as it's getting darker, I see my color temperature in my color temperature module here go down and down and down and down. Um, the only problem with setting this variable is that there used to be an option to where you could scroll on the um, to where you could scroll on the uh, module and it would turn up and down your color temperature. Now that doesn't work. Um, also, it used to be a thing where you can click on the color temperature and it uh, turns off, but now it turns off for a second, but then it immediately turns back on and it still says off. So those are the two things that kind of stopped working, but you know, that's okay. Um, what I personally really care about is knowing what color temperature my stuff is at. So that, you know, that's the primary function. You know, I might re-add that functionality back, but for now it's just fine. Um, uh, yeah, another thing I did was I sort of changed the icon a little bit on this volume indicator. Um, it used to just say muted and it used to remove the background when it was muted, but now when it's muted... Oh, um, okay, sorry, I thought that muted my mic. Sorry, that, that would have been a really weird pipe wire issue. Um, but now when it's muted, it sets it to red and it uh, uses the volume, the cut volume icon. The reason why I changed the volume icon is because this icon is the only one that has a cut version. The old volume icon version I used didn't have a cut version, so I couldn't have used that one because the icon would have been slightly different between the cut and the not cut version. Um, I also added this Bluetooth thing. Um, I also added a package thing. I think it would be right in between the volume and the uh, night shift thing. Um, I also added a speed test Thing. I, I added a speed test module so that I always know what my speed is. Um, yeah, so something cool about the speed test module is if I click on it, it opens up speedtest.com, uh, uh, speedtest.net. Um, and, you know, I opened up speedtest.net and I was like, man, how can I have this automatically run? Uh, and just out of a hunch, I did speedtest.net slash run and it totally ended up working. So, oh, there's, there's my school. Um, docs leaked. Um, 
and it totally ended up working out that hunch so um, that works the reason why so typically it's like 70 the reason why it's so low right now is because i'm seeding some linux isos and typically when people say that they're referring to piracy but i'm actually referring to linux isos because i want to support the FOSS community um you know that's that's kind of soy but you know <laughs> what, what can you do i suppose um but yeah that's pretty much it i'm gonna have some chili now for dinner and um yeah i hope everybody has a good day and yeah see you dude oh also i one more thing i changed the blur i, I think i doubled the blur on the terminals so it looks a little better and a little bit more frosted in my opinion. Um, I also feel like this is not true, but I feel like it's a little bit of a flex to have very subtle um, compositor effects uh, because compositor stuff, um, not really anymore at all. You know, I, I can have my compositor on and my CPU is still at 0% usage on my with nothing running. Uh, but um back in the day your compositor was a pretty okay portion of your cpu and i feel like it's a little bit of a flex to have such subtle effects as your on your compositor because um it's like oh oh i have so much cpu capability like my cpu is so powerful that i don't even need to have my compositor be super obvious and have all these fancy effects because my cpu is just so good um I don't even I don't even need to make the most out of my compositor, you know. Um, when really I just think frosted glass looks cool. I do wish. Um, let me just show this in GIMP. Uh, yeah, so let me take a screenshot of this. There's this sort of terrible banding um, on. The terminal when I sort of wish it was actually more like frosted glass and it sort of had a had a noise effect to it um, like if it had if it sort of oh that's white there because my cursor was there but ignore that if it was like frosted like this instead of like this with this terrible banding um, you know what I'm gonna do something really annoying just for this example what? There's definitely a faster way I can do this, but I'm not feeling like it. And there we go. Yeah, so if it was frosted like this, that would look really cool. I don't even know if this is showing up because of the bitrate, but it's very subtle, but it would, would have looked really cool if it was a thing. Um, and yeah, that's it. All right, see you, dude.